television in America isn't as mature as it is in England. No, it's you very say good in England, things. yeah. I uh, can't watch the... TV in America, to tell you the truth. It's such a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Dick Cabot show, of oh, course. Oh, oh, I... <laughs> I wondered. No, it I... just drives you crazy, you know, the, the commercials. You just get into something and it's sorry now, another word from... Mm -hmm. and another word from... And in the end, you know, they just put commercials on all the time. But you have commercials too over on your side Yeah, of the but pond. it's really done good, you know. It's really done good. They show maybe... If, a, if it's a 30-minute show, they'll have the commercial at the beginning, then the show will start, and after 15 minutes or so, they'll, yeah. it'll end and they say, end of part one. Ding, and then it goes into the commercial, and then the commercials end, and it says part two. Here it just goes, ding, 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 from one into the next. Yeah. You don't know if it's a commercial or if it's the show. <laughs> oh, it does some well, of the things. Let's say there are a lot of commercials. I'll, I'll give you that. I, I have a serious question I want to ask you, and I have a feeling we're going to get interrupted before I get to. But I've always, I, I meant to get into this with John and with you. Have you ever seen Monty Python's Flying Circus? Yes. 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 Well, Very good. You want to get that on in America. It's really good. I thought of trying to get some of that into, and yeah. showing it. Um, you try and get some there wasn't down <laughs> It's really good. Yeah. Let me, can I get to my serious question? Yeah. You have this tremendous influence. And you, all, you had, when you were together, you had this gigantic influence on the young people. Right? Uh, and everybody knows that the Beatles went through a drug phase. Did it ever occur to you, or did you ever stop and think of it this way, that the fact that this was known and the fact that you were the Beatles might have caused thousands of kids to go into drug problems that might not have otherwise? Uh, well, no, no. Let him Shut ask up, the question. Let him ask the question. First of all, uh, when we took the notorious wonder drug LSD, yeah. It was, uh, we didn't know we were having it. John and I had, the, had this drug, and it was given, we were at, having dinner with our dentist. Yeah. And he put it in our coffee and never told us. And we'd never, we never heard of it. I mean, it's a good job we hadn't heard of it because there's been so much uh, paranoia uh, created around the drug that people yeah. now, if they take it, they're already on a bad trip before they start. Yeah. Whereas for us, we didn't know anything. We were so naive. And uh, so we had it, and we went out to a club, and it was incredible. It was really incredible. <laughs> so a couple of years later, Paul had the drug, too. And the TV people in England came, and they said, so you've had this wonder drug, LSD. And he was saying, well, look, it's, you know, th the question you asked me about the responsibility for everybody else Paul said to the TV people, look, I'm not saying if I had the drug, it, it's you. If you're going to ask me if I've had it, I'm going to say yes, because I've had it. I'm, going to, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So he said, uh, they said, well, have you had LSD? And before they asked, he said, it's your responsibility, because if you're going to ask me and I'm going to say yes, and you're going to put it on the TV saying, mm -hmm. yes, we've had LSD. So really, it was the... It was their fault, so they asked the question, Paul said yes, and then they put it on and said, oh, they've had LSD, and then the world goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just wondered if, you're, you know, if you have to stop and think about, you use the word responsibility, which is, uh, always sounds so hokey when your school teacher says, you have a tremendous responsibility. <clears throat> you know. But did, did, you ever say, did you ever take that kind of thing seriously and think, you know, we've got to watch ourselves because if <sighs> we do this, other people will do that? Yeah, we always had to watch ourselves. Yeah. Uh, because if we weren't watching ourselves, there was somebody else out there who was. Yeah. And there was always uh, reporters who would follow us around on tour and always try breaking into our room, catching us doing something. Yeah. You know, something maybe that we shouldn't have been doing. And uh, the whole thing is that people want other people to do nasty things because yeah. they feed off it. And then they write, ha! Ah, they're doing nasty things. It's yeah. like in uh, a, a newspaper in England. I met David Frost the other day. Can I say David Frost, or do you bleep it out? Once. OK. <laughs> I bumped into him in the hotel, and he said, here, to really bring you down is a copy of the News of the World. He'd just come from England. He bought yeah. this paper, and there's a big story on the front saying... That's the scandal sheet in England. Yeah, yeah. but it's a big story saying about this group called the Marmalade, how they had orgies with their teenage fans and mm -hmm. all this sort of thing. But 
the whole idea of these reporters going out for months and months, scraping around, you know, lifting up the pavement, trying to see what rubbish there is to write about. And then yeah. they write about it as if they're saints and as if uh, well, everybody isn't talent. doing it. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know where the responsibility... I mean, maybe you just should stay at home and never say anything. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the easiest. Or why do people do things just because fam famous people do them is another question I've never know. been able to figure out exactly. Um, anyway, uh, on with the show. Here's a, here's a happy thought for the holidays from Singa. Uh, let me ask you one other thing, George, because I, it, it's a. Uh, do you have any thoughts on on why hard drugs and rock stars are have become synonymous? I mean, you can see why if you had a life like Bessie Smith had or. Um, Billy Holiday or something like that, whatever they, what they went through. If I were them, I suppose I would take anything that was available. But I mean, yeah. most of the people in rock haven't had that dismal, grinding, horrible kind of life that... Uh, is it in any way a way of emulating those other people who, who were uh, well, like those uh, There's a lot of, you know, I mean, a lot of pop people go through a hell of a lot, you know. Just say in one year they go, they see so much, and they get, they go through yeah. so, so many different things that uh, they either just want to get high. I mean, basically, it starts <clears throat> with people who just want to get high. You know, like people drink. I mean, that's mm. a big problem. People get have a drink, like I suppose after the show, maybe you have a drink just to get a little high. Mm. So musicians, you know, either drink a little bit or maybe they smoke a bit and then they want to get a bit high you know and they and they're sort of really looking for something mm -hmm. and it's the same with all those Bessie Smiths and all those people because the world is such a, a hard place to try and make it in so I mean it's, it, they're all just like buffers all those drugs and things and I suppose if they get on top of you you know they get next to you and then you can't stop it. I don't know, the hard things. Are certain. That's what I wonder, like heroin. I mean, why that? Certainly, hardly anybody's been through anything like those people I mentioned, like Judy Holliday's, uh, Judy, uh, Bessie, um, hell, Billy Holliday's <laughs> life. So uh, I, that, a life like that, I can see a, the really violent hard drugs, I suppose, because anything might be better than what they're going through. But unless you're to the point where you can say, I am just in the fires of hell all day, you know, day and night. Um, why, uh, the, the ones who've killed themselves, your, your colleagues, why, why heroin? Well, that seems to be the big one. Yeah. I don't, uh, I'm really unqualified to talk about heroin because I've never taken it. Yeah. And uh, I really don't intend to. There's, uh, you know, I'm sure it's just, uh, it's probably just the best high, you know, that's what it's down to. It's the one that gets them the highest, the quickest. But it just happens to kill you faster as well. I mean, they all sort of kill you in one way or another. And there's very few people who seem to be able to experience something like heroin and then get away from it. Mm -hmm. Because it just gets in the system and uh, they become dependent on it. I don't know. It's sad, you know, it's really sad because they're all looking for some deep love or something like that. And uh, they, they miss it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's much better yeah. to... Uh, try and not take any drugs, you know. If you can uh, get straight, <laughs> uh, really straight, then in a way it's much higher. I mean, I'm not really qualified to talk about that either. Yeah. I mean, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm sort thing. of in the middle, you know. Yeah. Indian music and drugs don't mix, as I understand it. Uh, no, there's been a big... Uh, said so. Yeah. There was a problem, you know, the Indian music really got popular during that 66, 67, you know, all the psychedelic period. And uh, I think uh, from that, most people have started to associate it with drugs because the hippies, apart from the classical people who used to go and watch the music anyway, like mm -hmm. the hippie people at that time were the ones who caught on to Indian music and it just happens that most of them were, you know, like smoking pot or something. And since then, you know, I don't know, maybe Ravi will be able to explain how the two got caught up together, but it's really mm -hmm. a problem. It's a problem for Ravi because he's, uh, you know, trying to do this, spent years and years of real disciplined life in order to play this music, and then people think, oh, you know, he must, must have taken dope to play that good. You know, and it's really, it's, uh, it's 
it's a terrible thing, you know, when somebody's, uh, it's completely the opposite. The audience are really misunderstanding what the whole thing's about. Maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. If we don't go now, we won't.